coming soon, the most ambitious effort in the history of the church. Together, together, all relevant and important information on the subject of spiritual warfare, deliverance, exorcism, and inner healing, and all the aspects of dealing with the forces of darkness. It's going to be what you've known as the members-only channel on steroids, much more. Now, those of you who have been part of our members-only channel, we're going to migrate you over, but you need to take the initiative to, to take advantage of this. You need to go to boblarson.org, our main website, take a look at the landing page there on Ex Dunamis, and follow the instructions. We're very excited. This has never been done before at any time in church history, and not even in the life of the internet. It's groundbreaking. It's unique. This information is compiled in a format that is easily accessible for you to quickly find out what you want to know fast about every aspect of getting free in the name of Jesus. Don't put it off. Coming June 1, Ex Dunamis. Tonight, our multiple personalities, demons. Are some deliverances unsuccessful because the issue of multiple personalities, MPD for short, is overlooked? Well, I believe that is the case. I want to warn you that avoidance in deliverance ministry of dealing with MPD, now properly called DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, is sometimes deliberate. And it is a very serious spiritual error. In just a little bit, I'm going to show you some video clips of a virtual encounter I did with an individual suffering from DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. I'm going to comment on those clips, and we're going to use this as teaching. Now, Bob Larson University has extensive teaching on multiple personalities and dissociative identity disorder and various other states of consciousness which can live in the mind of an individual especially the initial department of Bob Larson University, the International School of Exorcism, goes into great detail about this. And the other departments refer to it as it applies to the particular area that is being addressed. So if you're not part of Bob Larson University, just go to boblarsonuniversity.org and get signed up today. I'm going to make some very pointed Controversial statements. I've been a bit silent on this matter, perhaps for too long. I don't wish to insult anyone, but we have to face some facts here. I'm referring to the uninformed opinions and sometimes deliberate avoidance of some people involved in the deliverance ministry when it comes to MPD, Multiple Personality Disorder, which we will now refer to properly as DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, as it's known in the psychological DSM manual. I've been shocked to see, shocked, to hear some deliverance ministers on YouTube say that multiple personalities are demons and need to be cast out. I gasped when I heard that. Now, in some cases, some of these individuals should know better. But they're ignoring science and common sense. And quite frankly, some are just too lazy to take the time to find out about this aspect of human consciousness and what it's all about. I've taught about, I've taught about it for decades. I've written books about it. We have numerous videos and DVDs that are available from our website. And I'm not the only one. There are other experts. I've had them on Bob Larson Live. So ignorance is no excuse. You can't argue, well, I just didn't know that. No, the information is out there. If the lack of knowledge is due to unawareness, that's one thing. But to ignore behavioral psychology and the existential evidence that one encounters during deliverance sessions is... Irresponsible, to say the least. I know that's strong language, but it, it's time to blow the whistle on deliverance modalities that treat human parts of the mind as if they were demons and in doing so further 
traumatize the person they genuinely want to help. I've been dealing with DID for more than 40 years. A lot longer than some people have been alive and certainly longer than many have been doing deliverance today. I've ministered to thousands of cases. What I'm trying to say is thank God for those out there who are taking on the forces of darkness. I'm all for that. But please, I plead with you, get up to speed on terms like altars, DID, various aspects of human consciousness. I don't expect you to know what I know. I've been doing it for decades. But if you're involved in deliverance ministry, it's tantamount to spiritual malpractice not to get involved in this. Those who schedule in-person and virtual encounters with me, at least 20 to 25% of them have altars. Now, altars is a term that's an abbreviation for alter ego states or alternative personalities. We just call them alters for shorts. That's what they're known as in the psychological community. 20 to 25% of them have gone undetected by previous attempts at deliverance. And when I see the, the signs of someone having a multiple personality, having DID, I often say to the individual, before I even try to get into the altar system and understand it, has anybody ever talked about altars? Has anybody talked about different personalities in your mind? And usually they give me a blank stare like, I don't know what you're talking about. Nobody's ever even brought this up. And yet some of these people have been to good deliverance ministries and they spend hours trying to help them. This phenomenon is not new. It has been around for millennia. Now, in our books, books like Dealing with Demons, in Bob Larson University, we have tons of information on this. It's as old as King Saul, who clearly exhibited dissociated personalities and demons during his interaction with David, loving him one minute, wanting to kill him the next. So, Hear my heart. I appeal to all those of you in deliverance ministry. You must, it is not an option, you must acquire at least some level of knowledge about the way the mind operates and the way that Satan takes advantage of multiple personalities and you've got to stop trying to cast out something which isn't a demon. Re-traumatizing the person or traumatizing them, and sending these states of consciousness deeper into hiding, and the demons that are attached to these altar states go there too. So simply put, DID, a multiple personality, is an alter ego state of the mind, alter for short, as I said, created in most cases by trauma. This other personality is there as a way of compartmentalizing pain. Emotional pain, physical pain. And then that agony is placed in a separate identity, a created personality. This just happens in the mind. I believe it's a God-given way. The Lord has allowed the mind to work for some people to survive the most unthinkable things. The altar holds the pain and allows the core person to survive and function. Now, there are other kinds of altars, such as what we call a protective altar that looks after the person, particularly if the individual experienced trauma as a child. This protective personality functions as an internal guide, especially if the person did not know the Lord. There was no one to look after them. Maybe both parents were abusive. We run into that very, very often. And so, as a child, if they were experiencing sexual, sexual, physical, or emotional abuse, this protective personality took, takes over and, and devises psycholo psychological ways for this person to stay safe. But understand this, alders can even oppose God. They can even take on the essence and the identity of a demon. They often do that. Again, Bob Larson University teaches this in detail. I've covered it in my books. The information is there. 
But what I'm going to be showing you tonight are some excerpts from a recent virtual encounter. This particular individual was suffering from very severe anxiety disorder, some ADHD, and some other mental health issues. Behind all of this was demonization. Now, that demonization was dealt with in later sessions with this person. But we had to get the altar system cracked open, get into it, understand who was there, what their function was, how they were allowing demonization, and how they were preventing the person from getting the help that they needed. So what you're about to see is the first encounter of several sessions I had with this person. This is the first session which I unearthed a major altar state that believed it was a demon. I told you a moment ago, sometimes these altars take on the persona of a demon. They actually come to believe it. Or they act out that way so nobody does anything to them. What happened is that this altar, thinking it was a demon, played out this script in the man's mind. And all of this kept this individual from getting the help he needed. He had contact with many deliverance ministries. They didn't know what to do. They were clueless about what DID is and how it operates. Now, I understand there's some who would have done more if they had known more and they didn't know the information was available. That's why I'm doing this, to let you know the information is out there. I want to apologize in advance. There are some sound issues that we ran into. It, it, it was a Skype situation, and, and sometimes that happens. It happens with Zoom, too, once in a while. It was unavoidable. But I've gone ahead and pulled some excerpts out of this session I had with this gentleman because of the importance of what this encounter demonstrates. And so it just simply overrides the audio concerns. I started out leading this man in curse breaking. And then I sensed that what this man thought was a demon wasn't. Now, he had studied a lot about deliverance and watched all the deliverance people on the Internet. And he had gone to some people for deliverance, and he'd had deliverance virtually previously to me. But nobody brought up altars. Nobody brought up dissociative identity disorder. It just wasn't there. It wasn't part of their template. So he wasn't getting the help that he needed. I think they were sincere in most cases. But it doesn't matter. The man wasn't getting the help he needed. So I started by trying to make a connection with this personality that was insisting it was a demon. What I've done, what you're going to watch tonight, is this teaching session as I break this down into four segments, and then I'm going to comment on each of the segments. So first, meet a young man from Australia. He's been struggling with emotional issues that he believes are spiritual in origin. So if you're a spirit, you have a name. Maybe you're human, I don't know. Some human part of him or an ancestor, but if you're a spirit, what's your name? I you think it's that easy. <laughs> Are you a spirit? Are you a spirit? <laughs> I need to laugh. Wouldn't you like to know? What? Wouldn't you like to know? No, I, if you're a spirit, I demand to know, and you have no choice but to tell me. Ah. If you're a spirit, get your head up and look at me. <laughs> what do you expect to prove by that if you're spirit <laughs> what's what are you what are you going expecting to prove by that 
Just that being different. What? That I got control. Well, if you had control and if you're a demon, then you would have stopped all these people from praying for him. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't have allowed that to go on if you were in control. So I think we have I tried. Something. Huh? I tried. I tried. But he seems to be damn too strong. He gets into the word every single day. And he's living a pure and holy life. Not just that, every time he damn does these stupid sessions, he fasts. So like he's not fasting right now, which is great. <laughs> but the last one, he fasted for a whole damn week. All he had was liquids. It's so, I hate it. And all he does is watch stupid sermons all day. It's so, oh. We hate it. Ah, who's we? Who, who are you? <laughs> we got plenty of. <laughs> there's plenty of us in here. <laughs> <sighs> And we, we're not going anywhere anytime soon. You, you're not answering the question of whether or not you're a spirit or a human. Are you part of him? Or are you a demon? That's what we try to make him think. <laughs> you know how much fun it's been wrecking his entire life all these years? <laughs> Making him think that he's I'm stupid. <laughs> Making him go at half on speed. No, no, no. You're not answering the question. <laughs> the question is, what? are you human or a spirit? Oh, really? Is it really not that obvious? You think I'm a stupid human? Are you joking? <laughs> No, I'm not joking. <laughs> uh. No, I'm not joking. So answer the question clearly. You've evaded the question every which way. I am obviously a spirit. Are you kidding me? I'm not stupid like this guy that can get confused. Wait, wait. If, you, wait, if, you're, if you're spirit, who are you? <laughs> I'm not going to give you that. It's not that easy. <laughs> you don't have a choice. Oh, if you're a spirit, you have oh, to. No! Yes, no, 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 no. Spirit, you have to tell me who you are. No, 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 no. The rules are that if you're a spirit, you have to, under the command of the Lord Jesus Christ, give me your identity. Not really. I just no. gotta, I just, gotta, I just gotta wait you out. <laughs> You know How long does this session go for? 50 minutes? <laughs> oh, it's so fun. You know, you don't act like a demon. You don't, like, you don't act like a demon at all. Mm -mm. You're going to have a hard time convincing me that you're a demon. <laughs> there are other possibilities. 
There are other possibilities. Uh -huh. You want to hear what those other possibilities are? Oh, here we go. Well, what do you mean, here we go? Has anybody else told you of other possibilities? Oh, yeah, here and there. Like what? Oh, he watches all your videos. I've seen through his eyes what okay. the possibilities yeah. could be. Well, then you might be part of him. <laughs> well, I've been here that long. <laughs> well, no, you may be part of him. That was pretty interesting for those of you who have never seen anything like that. Let's take another look at what I said. This altar was concerned that this man was living a pure life, that he was wrecking his life. This altar was saying, I have control. That's very often the case since it's an alter ego. It wants to keep this person safe or functioning. I've got control here. Don't mess with me. And then it went so far to say, I am a spirit. But notice, I kept pushing. What is your name? Who are you? What's your identity? It wouldn't tell me. It would not obey. And sometimes when you're doing deliverance and you're not getting the results you want, you can't get whatever it is that's speaking to you or manifesting to obey. It may be human. Now, as we teach at Bob Larson University, it could be an ancestral altar. It could be a contemporaneously acquired altar from the mind state of another person that the individual's had a soul tie with. But what I did in this particular occasion, I kept watching the eyes. You, you know that that's rule number one. I believe in doing deliverance. Keep your eyes on the person. Watch the changes in the eyes. So when there is a shift from the person to a demon or a shift to the personality, you'll notice it. That's what happened here. Now let's go to the second excerpt. This is where I explained to this man the states of mind that this young man was battling. Look at me. What? It's no wonder you've been able to play this. The demons have been able to play this game and keep it going. It's like a shell game. Here's the demon. Not a demon. Demon, not a demon. Just keep moving it around and create utter chaos. Sometimes you're him, sometimes you're an alter state of mind, sometimes you're a demon. See, the problem is, if there is part of Gary that's cooperating with this whole thing. Yes, of course not. Hate it. Hate it. If there's some it's part of Gary that's not a demon who's cooperating with this, then nobody's going to really get much of anywhere. So let's uh, let's be reasonable here. Okay. I want to talk to the human part of Gary that acts like a demon. Uh. 
I'm not sure what your motive is. I think you have a number of motives. Man, and he's we gotta kill him. Gary's not even aware of it. He doesn't even know what you're doing. He just doesn't understand it. I do. And you could move it back and forth like like pieces on a chessboard and just constantly keep people guessing. Here's the eyes give it away. The eyes give it away. So let me just tell you, I've been doing this a very long time. How do you know that we're not just hiding their eyes, changing their eyes, messing with you? Oh, you hear back and forth like this everywhere. <clears throat> How do you know we're not uh, that we're not just so suppressed that we can't fully show ourselves? That's true to a certain extent. <laughs> you think Gary get into the Bible and living the way he is and living? <laughs> uh, and uh, why do you find this all so funny? Yeah. <laughs> you find it funny because of this shell game that just keeps going around here. And the confusion that it creates. So you can just. How do you know we don't? How do you know you're not dealing with a spirit that causes confusion? <laughs> it's so fun. Every time he goes to pray, we make his mind go blank and he forgets what he's talking about. <laughs> now, wait a minute. If you are fully spirit, you are subject to Christ. Oh, fully. Damn it. You're a hundred percent subject to Christ, that which is fully spirit. And you're subject to obey exactly what I say when I say it. Okay? That's the way it works. But because not if we're disobedient. <laughs> but because you flip his brain back and forth. <coughs> uh, confusion is so good. You just happen to be coming in when confusion is. Uh... I want Gary, the core identity of this individual, to come back to me. Gary, come back to me. Yeah. Hello. This gentleman was experiencing some very serious mind control, spiritual warfare. And I was dealing with three states of consciousness here. And you could see him switching. That's what we call it in the ministry or the psychotherapeutic approach to DID, switching when they go from one state of consciousness or one alter identity presenting itself to another. So you saw that switch from a demon to an altar to this man. Now, let's look at the third excerpt of this session that I have picked for you. You'll see me explain to this man what was actually going on in his mind. This is just a simple rule. Basically, demons have to do what you tell them to do. When you run into an identity or a personality in a deliverance process, it doesn't do what you tell it to do. 
there's some human element in there because the human will can resist. Mm. But a demon can't resist. For a little bit he can, but then eventually he has to give in because he's a demon and we have authority. So then I watched that every time I tried to say, you're not a demon, it would shift it shift the uh, conversation to go to something else over here. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would, not, it would not stay on track defending, no, I'm a demon, I'm a demon, I'm a demon. So yeah. this is Because why... deep down it knew, it knew, it knew. So Pardon? it knows it's not a demon. It clearly knows it's not a demon. That's why it's dodging. So, but so... it's like Gary is very closely, that poor Gary is very closely aligned with the demon. So that when somebody tries to deal with it, it's like this. It shifts back and forth. So it can be the demon and then flip and be Gary. So if you're if, if it's the demon, uh, it's causing confusion, disruption, all sorts of things. If you try to nail it, it flips and lets Gary, which is just like it, and you get nowhere. So the thing is, I watch your I watched your eyes, and I could tell when the human personality was out. That's why I kept forcing that issue, because <coughs> you weren't looking at me like a demon. You weren't speaking like a demon. You weren't saying the things a demon would say. You were saying the things that an evil don't give a blank personality would say yeah you know like man f off i don't care about you this is a joke get off you know you this is never going to be different pretty much so essentially it sounds like me being toxic in the world it's pretty well that side of me then yeah Which, so yeah i emphasize if if people don't understand this and very few people in deliverance do so they're, they're just going to get constantly just led around every which direction. They mean well, and they're at times going to have some success, but then the demon just shape shifts. Mm. Now you're dealing with porn, Gary, or you're dealing with this, or you're dealing with that. Whoops, you're dealing with a demon. Whoops, you're dealing with Gary. Oh, and if there's another personality in there, we don't know that yet then that makes it even more interesting because it's just, you know, it's very clever. It's like riding a merry-go-round. Which horse should go on? Oh, I'm on this one. Nope, I'm on this one. No, I'm on this one. Mm -hmm. and, and they're playing this game. So here's the danger. Um, you know, I, I'm glad for the help that you've gotten, but the problem is if people don't understand what I've just told you, it's going to be a, a constant in confusion. You're going to go through a stressful situation and maybe get discouraged that, well, I mean well, I love the Lord, I'm doing everything I can. Now, let me just quickly take a step back and say the person I'm looking at right now is the real Gary. The real Gary. But this evil, whether it's porn Gary or whatever, He's just a smirk away. He is. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel him. I can feel him trying to smile, or laugh, or whatever at the moment. But I'm like, nah. So, yeah. um, he's. I. It makes sense. It makes sense. He's a multiple personality of you, nah. along with all these other things. Now, I I do have to go in a moment because I can't keep the next client waiting. Let me do something here real quickly. Well, at least I know your name. Ah! <laughs> Ate it. He actually got it out of me. A what? He actually got it out of me. Yeah. Guy's not as stupid as you think. I don't know, Porn Gary, if you're alone in there or not. Maybe you'll have 
Maybe he has some other personalities like you, but very definitely he's got you, and you're loving this game. You're just playing this for all it's worth. Anything to wreck him. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's it. Man, these dames are going to take him down. But, but on top of that, you get an added benefit because you've got all these Christian people, and you think they're probably pretty crazy. These crazy Christian people are just flailing away at this thing. They don't even know you're there. I had a very long conversation with this individual that you're not seeing the whole thing, but you did see part of it, about how all of this intersects, how it works. And then I talked to this altar like a friend. And when I approach an alter ego state that's oppositional or defensive, I often say, let me be your friend. In a very non-threatening way, you make contact with this other state of mind. And then I learned from all of that that the issue of this altar was pornography in this man's past. Now, the core individual, that's what we refer to as the real person, the, the God state of consciousness, had essentially conquered this addiction. But because there was an alter state that liked what pornography resulted in, the physical sensations that came with it, and the sense of satisfaction for a limited time that it brought, there was part of him, his identity, an alter ego, an altar, that didn't want to give that up because he had a somewhat dysfunctional life and there was a lot of personal pain that he had gone through emotionally. And, and this brought him a sense of well-being and physical satisfaction, and he didn't want to give it up. So he split off from the main man who had conquered the addiction, and then, as an altar, became invaded by demons. All right, let's go on to the next excerpt. This is where I make direct connection with the altar state of mind. I'm going to be the best friend you ever had. I'm going to be the best friend. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be your friend. I don't need friends. I don't like this. Ah! I don't like this. No, no, no. No. Yeah, go. Yeah. Yeah, 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 porn, Gary, you, you need this. No. It's, it. this, I should get a little like tired. Stupid Jesus, this stupid Jesus showed him love and now he, all he does is read the Bible. If you show me love, it's not going to be good. <laughs> porn, Gary, or whatever. Listen, aren't you getting a little tired of playing this game? I mean, you've played it for so long, for so many hours with so many people. Honestly, aren't you a little worn out by now? No. Huh? Come on. you got to admit it. It's exhausting. I mean, it's damn annoying because now he knows how to defend against the things that are helping me. So... Let's talk again sometime, shall we? Fine. Okay. I can't wait, Bob. It's going to be a real fun time. <laughs> you know what? Hey, hey, poor Gary, you have an incredible sense of humor. It's, it's a little warped and twisted, but you've got, a, you've got a great sense of humor. And you know what? You are just what he needs, not, not the way you are. But if you can come to Jesus, you're what he needs to come out of his shell and to break through this ADHD. You're, his, you're part of his answer. You can break him out of it. 
I know. Obviously, yeah, these things. That's 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 assuming that I actually want to break out of it and don't just enjoy these things and messing them up. But you don't. I, I understand you're not there right now. Okay, you're not there yet. But just think about it. You know, you could be his best friend. You could help this guy to live a life he's never been able to really live. God, uh, God, he's already doing big stuff. He's already the Lord's God. trying to get him to start a damn church. And he's already he's already in the works of doing it. And, and he, no, it's not. No, it's not good. Okay, just think about it. Think about good. as as twisted as your thinking is, God may have allowed you to be there to help him break out of a, a socially maladjusted condition and and become a incredible person that other people can love and connect with, which is what he's always wanted. Until you just retreated the poor. Okay, buddy. You know what? Give me a fist bump. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. All right. All right. All right. We'll talk again. Fair enough. Fair enough. I want the core part of you to come back. Oh. Yes. Hello, Bob. Did you hear what I just told Porn Gary? Yeah, he's uh, he's not he's not as tough as he seems. He's honestly, you see, I think he. I'm gonna be honest. I think he likes you, Bob. I think he does. <laughs> you softened him up, honestly. I, I I could I could um. He was he was definitely he didn't know what to say, honestly, which was quite. Quite funny to see. You know what? Let me tell you something. There's a real you that can get through this ADHD, the social isolation, all the emotional and relationship problems. If, if Porn Gary can be as outgoing, a character, Jokester, likable guy. That's you. It's just that's a perverted form of you. But if the two can come together, a lot of the things you struggled with your whole life will start to disappear. Your brain's going to come together, your emotions will come together. Look. This was and can be the turning point of your life. Mm. Here you can see this individual reasoning with me. And you can clearly see the altar is willing to make some changes. The man that I'm ministering to is really a likable guy. And I did have more sessions with him later resolving the altar and eventually casting out demons. And he's doing great. He still has some problems. Not everything is resolved yet. I'm continuing to minister to this particular person. But he understands now that the key to his freedom was understanding the altar system, seeing how it operated independently in his mind, and bringing unanimity to all the aspects of consciousness so that he could function as a whole person. What do we learn from this? Once again, read my books, especially dealing with demons. Enroll in Bob Larson University. It is there that you're going to find the best, most updated, fully explained understanding of what altar systems are all about. And how you, if you're involved in praying with somebody, whether you're an active deliverance minister, or you just run into this with a family member, a friend, a spouse, or somebody, how you can handle it until you get some professional help. Number one, 
altars are not demons. I said it before, I repeat it again. Altars are not demons. They are separate aspects of the way that the mind works. So an altar is a fragment, a compartment, a piece of the soul or the consciousness of the person, not the total person. It doesn't have the full range of emotionality that the real person has. The person God created, this is something the mind created, so it's limited in scope about what it can think and how it can act, but it's not a demon. Secondly, as you clearly saw, sometimes, I won't say the majority, but it's certainly a phenomenon if you're involved in deliverance you will run into, altars can act like demons. And they can even think like demons. I've had to go through, through some pretty extensive processes in certain cases to convince the altar it wasn't a demon. And I had to walk in through questions that, that challenged that assumption until I broke it down and the altar would finally say, no, I'm not a demon. But as long as it thinks it's a demon, it's going to act like a demon and it's going to fool some people. The third thing I want you to take away is this kind of approach to deliverance is admittedly time consuming. It requires careful observation and very cautious interrogation, knowing how to ask the right kind of question that will uncover whether or not it is a demon, an immaterial evil spirit entity, or whether it's an aspect of the consciousness of the person. The question is whether or not you truly want to see this person free or whether you want to go through the motions of a deliverance, tell them the demon is gone, or that what expressed itself with identity was a demon and you cast it out. Well, you can do that if you want to, but the person is really not going to get better. In fact, in most cases, over time, they're going to get a lot worse because you're not going to get the demon because he's hiding behind the altar. And sometimes it is the altar who is possessed, if you want to put it that way, demonized by the evil spirit. So you're just not going to get rid of it. It takes time. Deliverance is a process. It's a little by little conquering of the enemy's kingdom. So for those of you who are interested in deliverance or getting free from demonic possession, ask yourself the question, are you willing to do what's necessary to take the time to complete the process properly if it has dissociative aspects to us, to it. And the fourth thing I want to say, please hear me in this, the danger of avoiding this aspect of healing ministry is that the person is just not going to get free. Or if the altar gets treated like a demon, it dives deeper into consciousness. It hides even more. Because if you're screaming and yelling, come out in the name of Jesus, and it can't come out, it sometimes has no choice but to recede further into hiding. I've had many people involved in exorcism and deliverance ministry come to me and say, Bob, you're right. I was yelling and rebuking something who kept saying to me, stop it, I'm not a demon. Now, sometimes the altars will stand up to you. Sometimes they just run and hide if you try that approach. But some will confront you and say, no, I'm not a demon, stop it. If it says that, yes, it could be a demon line. But it can also be legitimate. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the discernment to know which it is. And if it says, I'm not a demon, leave me alone. Take a deep breath, step back. 
and then use further interrogation techniques that will help to clearly define whether or not it is a demon. And I don't have time to go into that now. So, what I've shared with you is a bit of a rebuke to those who are willfully not wanting to embrace this aspect of deliverance, but also an encouragement to those of you who may be floundering a bit because you're running into cases you can't solve because you're trying to get rid of something, cast out that which is not an evil spirit, and therefore you're not fixing that part of the problem through a healing process, so the cover of the demon is removed and the evil is completely exposed. My prayer is this has been helpful. One of the best things you could do, obviously, is enroll in Bob Larson University or get signed up as soon as possible for Exdunamis. Because we're going to post on Exdunamis other case studies like this. And we're going to have this eventually all topically arranged. You know how Netflix and Prime and Hulu and all the rest of them do it? Well, that's basically how we're doing it. Only we're doing it from a biblical Christian standpoint to get you the best information so that you can quickly pick what you want to watch or listen to that's going to explain in greater detail than I have time to tonight. But I do want to say to anyone who's watching me, you have a part of you that seems to act demonic at times. Other people tell you that you have quick identity or personality shifts, that you're one person one moment and you're someone else a few moments later. And that when they try to pray for or talk to that other person, it gets very uncomfortable and it does not respond like, if you watch me on YouTube and watch me on the Members Only channel and soon on Extunimus, it doesn't act like a demon acts. It doesn't have the full range of that identity. If you've had something like that happen to you or other people have said that, and they're, they're a bit confused, please get in touch with us. Let us refer you to somebody who knows about this, not just an anonymous individual who says they want to help but somebody I know has been properly trained by our ministry who understands some measure of what this is all about and can begin to get you some relief to get the internal altar system solved so that prayers of deliverance will be effective and you could get free. That is our desire. And if you're involved in deliverance ministry, yes, I've been very strong in saying what I did tonight so that you would, you know, I could get your attention. But I'm not here to hinder, I'm here to help. And if you want to know more about what this is all about, enroll in Bob Larson University, go to boblarson.org and check out Ex Dunamis, look at our book resource list, on our website, boblarson.org. Get in touch with me. You might even want to do a virtual session with me, not because you think you have a demon, because you'd like to know about this and spend a little time with me directly teaching you and analyzing some of the situations that you've encountered. We're here to help. Especially those who are victimized in some way, and have created an altar state. So I want to say to you, I want to be your friend. I'm here to help. If you are part of the mind of someone who is watching me now, this may be the first time you've ever heard what I've talked about, and you're touched by it. If so, let the core person contact us so that we can help them and help you. And remember, not only do I want you to get free, stay free, and live free, 
coming soon, weeks away, ex Dunamis. Your financial support and prayers make it possible for us to bring hope for the hurting and freedom to those in spiritual bondage. For the latest information regarding ministry outreaches, go to boblarson.org or call 303-980-1511.